the, the Republicans have flipped the Senate at this stage. The House of Representatives is uncertain. So feasibly, uh, the Republican can control all arms of the US government here. Yes, yeah, a stunning win. Let, let's not forget, only a few years ago, Donald Trump was laughed off the political scene. He was given no chance of coming back uh, anywhere near the White House after the insurrection around and inside the building behind me, which makes his political comeback all the more remarkable. And what I find remarkable as well is the is the cross-demographic appeal for that Donald Trump picked up uh, during election night. Sure, he had his traditional Republican voters. They were pretty much in the bag already. But he peeled off from the Democrats, black Americans, Latinos. Donald Trump won 45 percent of the Latino American vote, 45 percent, a massive increase from the percentage he pulled from that community only four years ago. And he also did well compared to Kamala Harris on a range of other demographics, uh, including young people and first time voters. Let's bring our correspondents now. Jay McMillan, our North America bureau chief, is not far from Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence in West Palm Beach, Florida. And Barbara Miller is at Howard University in Washington, D.C., where Kamala Harris will step up to make her concession speech shortly. Uh, first to you, Jade. You were in the midst of things last night at the celebration party. What was the mood like amongst Donald Trump supporters? Well, Michael, the mood inside that election watch party here in West Palm Beach, uh, I think, was euphoric. People were feeling very confident as they entered that venue. Donald Trump supporters telling us uh, that they believed with everything they had that the former president would be returned to the White House. But of course, it wasn't a guaranteed outcome. Opinion polls in the lead up to Election Day had consistently suggested that this was going to be an incredibly tight race with Kamala Harris. Uh, but as those critical southern swing states of North Carolina and Georgia were called for Donald Trump as it became clear that he had a lead in a number of those other battlegrounds that could get him over the line. The mood in Florida really lifted. Uh, people could see Donald Trump's return to the White House in their sights. I spoke to uh, one man from Iowa who travelled all the way from Iowa here to Florida to be in that election party watch uh, watch party last night. He had campaigned for Donald Trump. He described it as being like nothing he had ever experienced before. He said he felt like he was seeing history unfold and he agreed with Donald Trump's running mate, J.D. Vance, who, uh, as he spoke on that stage last night, described this as the greatest political comeback in US history. Just amazing scenes. And uh, as we go to where Associated Press has formally called the swing state of Michigan for Donald Trump, which takes his electoral college tally to, if my maths is correct, it's not always correct, to 292 votes, uh, which uh, is just, just reinforces the emphatic nature of uh, Donald Trump's win. So breaking news. Donald Trump picking up the state of Michigan. That's according to Associated Press. So, Jay, back to you. What will a second Trump presidency look like? Well, look, whoever is in the White House uh, obviously has an enormous impact on the future of this country, but also on the world. Donald Trump campaigned really heavily on the economy. He urged voters to punish the Biden administration and by extension the Vice President Kamala Harris for historically high inflation for the rising cost of living. And as we've seen in other parts of the world, uh, voters appear to have done that. Donald Trump is promising new tax cuts. He's promised uh, new tariffs on imported goods. So we'll have to see how that could affect Australia. He also also made immigration so central to his campaign. He was uh, so critical of Joe Biden for an historic increase in the number of people who had crossed the US southern border with Mexico without authorization under Joe Biden's watch. And he's promising to carry out the largest deportation of undocumented immigrants in America's history. We don't have a lot of detail on how that is going to work. Uh, obviously, huge implications here. Also, for uh, global affairs, how will Donald Trump approach the conflicts in the Middle East and in Ukraine? Uh, there will be a, a lot of discussion around that in the weeks and months ahead. As far as we know, Donald Trump is still at his Mar-a-Lago residence. Unclear at this point whether we might hear from him again following uh, that victory speech last night.
Yes, uh, waiting to hear from him. Jade, thank you so much. We are certainly waiting to hear from Kamala Harris. Barbara Miller, over to you at Howard University here in Washington. Any indication of the timing as to when Kamala Harris will step up and speak to the nation? We expect possibly in around three hours' time. The Harris campaign has reached out to supporters, inviting them to come to this event. It didn't bill it as a concession speech, only as remarks by the vice president, uh, suggesting that it would be late afternoon uh, local time here. Now, we would expect her, of course, to publicly acknowledge that resounding defeat, an election not nearly as close as the polls had predicted or the Harris camp thought it would be. We'd also expect her to thank the many thousands of people across the country who've worked, some of them day and night, to try and get Kamala Harris elected. Many of those people close to her now, of course, not looking to transition from a campaign to uh, a possible administration role, uh, but on the hunt for new employment. And we'd we expect her to ask her supporters to accept this result. Kamala Harris was very clear in the run-up to the election that she could not see a way in which she would dispute this result. And given those margins by which Donald Trump is taking key states, including, uh, as you say, Michigan, the Harris campaign had been banking on perhaps uh, getting those blue wall states of Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, there is no room, no wiggle room there that we could possibly see for her to contest it. But I think also important to recognize that tens of millions of Americans have woken up today deeply, deeply anxious and disappointed. People who were told that everything was at stake in this election and that Donald Trump was a man who threatened the very future of this country. So it's going to be interesting to see whether Kamala Harris addresses that anxiety, addresses those concerns, and to what extent and what clearly will be an extremely difficult speech for her, she tries to talk about unity, she tries to talk about coming together. We understand, Michael, she's been trying to reach Donald Trump. <clears throat> of course, it would be protocol to uh, concede defeat and acknowledge his victory before she spoke publicly. We haven't had word yet on whether that conversation has actually taken place.